Thank you, Riv. And coming straight to you, Zyrene, we saw Pawn pull out the Azir, proving he can play it just as well as Easy Hoon or Faker. Thoughts on that? This is pretty much my favorite team composition in League of Legends at the moment because you've got multiple sources of persistent damage. You've got so much late game threat, objective control with the Nunu, two tanks, and it Overall, it's just absolutely amazing. And the Annie and the Maokai synergy gives you engage power, and then you have disengage with the Azir. You cover almost all your bases, except for things like early game pressure, but the way Clearlove played the Nunu was basically like an early ganker. It was absolutely amazing to watch it. And then Pawn stepping up, he did shake a little bit in the laning phase. Easy Hoon had a really good one, but then things just started to collapse around that mid lane, and I think that's where it got out of hand. Coming to the game, we thought that the Annie would be a really contested pick, and I'm surprised that SKT kind of just let it roll by and ignore how important this pick was, and EDG took it in the first rotation with the Maokai, so the game has evolved, this series in particular, to a point where you're not saving picks at all, you're just picking what you know is strong and what's working against the opposing team. SKT now is going to have the red side for the next game, which means that they have the opportunity of either banning it if EDG chooses to pick it, or take the same risk that EDG did and pick it in their first two picks. Yeah, it was really strange, because SKT, they need to think about their pick ban here. Because in game two, they first picked Lucian Rek'Sai on the first round. Don't pick that Lucian first, pick the Annie. It's highly contested in this series, and you can see them right now going over the picks and bans. Faker on the screen, is he mm -hmm. coming in for this one? I think that at this point they should really put in Faker. I mean, Easy Hoon had a really strong performance in game one. Um, but I think if it's like to the last series and to the last match, and it possibly you can fly out of MSI here, I think you need to put in Faker, who is undoubtedly the one that performs the best under pressure. So I hope that they uh, put in Faker and uh, yeah, that he shows why he is considered the god of mid lane. And he picks I mean the block. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also that. I mean, you, you have, you, it's hard to imagine a world in which Faker does not come in to a best of five series, you know, for uh, a championship it title would, if they are down in that series. It would be the darkest timeline. Yeah. That's the world <laughs> that it would be. <laughs> right, absolutely, right? Uh, but I do want to go back to your point about Clear Love in the early game. A lot of people throwing love out to him on Twitter. We have uh, one tweet from at Farm Farm8 Gaving who said, Clear Love making SKT tilt. Oh my God, is this real life? I mean, he was all over the map, as you said, Just throughout tilt this him. game. Just tilt him. Just like Kobe, give SKT some PTSD. I like how he's putting so much pressure this entire game, but he has level one snowball. He's maxing consume, yet he's still going for as many ganks as you would normally if you were maxing it. Oh my god, and Clear Love is just brutal on this. Ooh. I love how he smites the minion too. He's like, no. I'm gonna Gets survive. rid of that extra auto in And there. honestly, EDG is just so good at baiting engages and doing power dives. Like, they use the pressure and what is a big misconception when you see EDG and a AHQ playstyle is that a lot of kills feature uncontrolled games. I think that is not correct. In this um, meta game, when you're going for the tower dives and it's like 4 versus 2, you're totally fine trading 1 for 1 if you can get the tower afterwards. And you are forcing the enemy to play your game, react to the tower dives. If they don't do it, they die. And I think this might be the kryptonite towards SKT. Has been confirmed Faker is coming in for this <laughs> fourth game. Okay. So gentlemen, as we look towards that fourth game, what is this change here in both SKT's approach and EDG's reaction to it? It frees up a ban for SKT. They're no longer banning LeBlanc. Now EDG has to ban the LeBlanc. Yep. That's the biggest thing, to be honest. They also have a state. This is what I was thinking throughout the tournament, is that they should play Easy Hoon blue side, and then they should flip play Faker red side, and give Faker the counter pick, and then when they're playing blue side, they get a Cassiopeia or an Azir early for Easy Hoon, and it works out really well for him. But now that Faker gets the counter pick, they can rely on that mid lane, and I think if Bengi gets something that he can get it going with, it could be a game that we see. But this is the thing, is mid lane hasn't been the big problem. It's been the side lanes. It's been Marin in the top lane struggling, being ganked by Clear Love and also not getting that Maokai for himself, because he had a really good Maokai game, but we haven't seen him get that champion again. And I think that's something that he thrives on, and when he's on the Rumble, he just doesn't have the same team fight impact. And I feel like putting SKT, Faker, the god in the middle, uh, into your game plan, and he's usually the one that, if you're down, is coming into the match. And I think this can 
affect greatly the mentality. Yeah. If I'm playing with a faker beside me who's like radiancing just experience and uh, supremacy, I think that <laughs> you're just playing better. Wow. <laughs> well, I think we can all agree that it's a high stakes match, but these picks have digressed from, you know, in the beginning we thought Thresh was a top pick, even in, be in the beginning of the tournament, a bard, a super high skill champion, and now we've devolved into the easiest to execute picks, <laughs> a Maokai, a Nunu, the Annie. These are champions that are really hard to mess up on. So these guys are just picking what is safe and what works very well. I want to see more of that style of pick. Stay away from the Thresh, whoever wants to pick it. Go with the Alistar, go with the Janna, just something that is easier to execute, and particularly the Maokai, just because of how good he is right now. Now, we've talked a lot about how putting Faker into the mid lane means, mid lane means that Bengi pays a lot of attention to it. They want to get him rolling. So it actually seems counterintuitive to me, to your point, Zyrene, mm. if the side lanes are the problem, to put the guy in the mid lane who you normally want to focus on and leave the side lanes to fend for themselves. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe Faker will get solo kills. Maybe he'll get some attention and then snowball it from there so you don't have to pay attention to that lane anymore. Well, I want to work on that point as well, though. In the first game, Pawn showed a lot of vulnerability to the early pressure, particularly with the Gragas gank work, which should not have, and then eventually a big lead was built up in that mid lane. I think that's what they're going for with bringing in Faker for this time around. A little bit more pressure means that Faker can snowball hard enough to shut down Pawn. And maybe he's also the one starting the rotations because what I think is SKT is a little bit resting on the laning phase for too long when they should really be roaming out. And I think SKT, when they have a mid lane pressure from Faker like this, he can easily roam together with Bengi into the enemy jungle, putting the walls down and denying the tower dives, which are so eminent if you play against EDG. And they just strive on those tower dive pressure for pressure play. So if you can actually shut that down with early, early wards, and then play your game, I think SKT can come back here. And that's the thing is the side lanes have been suffering, but like you said, if Faker is going to start roaming, which Izihun doesn't do a whole lot of roaming, right? He prioritizes CS above everything else. That could be what opens up the map for them if Bengi and Faker make a roaming squad. Lastly, we've talked a lot about EDG accelerating the pace of the game here after game one, really forcing SKT to play on their pace, on their style. How does SKT get back to that more consistent, stabilized gameplay that is around rotations and objectives and farming up and picking the correct fights. I, I think you just boil it down to the pick. The composition that you have dictates how you want to play the game. You know, some comps are better at sieging, some are better at team fighting. And one of the best comps I saw from SKT this tournament was the first game against Fnatic, that Ezreal mid lane, a really high skill for Faker so that he can outplay the mid laner, get a big advantage there helped the side lanes out with the true shot barrage. We've seen him actually, he's so good that he helps his other lanes without even moving. I want to see that kind of composition from them. They do have the last pick. It's a little bit of a telltale if we see an early Corky pick from SKT, but I think that's their best shot. All right, well, a lot to mull over there. We're going to step away while the teams craft their strategies for game four. But first, we want to check in on another Coca-Cola viewing party. Don't worry, Seth King, I got you covered on this one. This one is taking place in San Francisco. Ooh, Achilles cast. I know that guy. You do know yeah, him? Yeah, he's a caster that works in the amateur scene. All right, well, there really you have it. Nice guy. Hit me up. Wanted some love from San Francisco. They're going plenty crazy, <laughs> so they deserve it. Well, keep it tuned right here. The Midseason Invitational continues with game four between Edward Gaming and SKT in just three and a half. The last game, Edward Gaming was able to come out on top. Now's the chance for SKT to kind of bounce back. Gets popped up, there's the flash, and they may not have the chase. Arcane Smash coming in from Koro. Snowball. It is! Oh, he gets the fourth one! But it's a 5 0 0 clear love now. Deft. On the outside, what a flash to get out of that hook, but he's gonna meet Marin as well on the backside. Daft in a bad spot, flashed into the pit by himself there, and he's almost staying alive. It is Marin that's gonna be able to take him down. Easy Hoon gets knocked back by Emperor's Divide. That's gonna be Koro picking up a kill, and EDG are now two turrets deep. SKT forced to surrender. There was no way they're coming back there. 